Okay, we are in the Philadelphia in Stockholm, and I normally prep these walks before I do them, but this time we're headed for the stage, and this is going to be challenging with a guitar around my neck. Stage left is this way. More stairs. This is a convention centre apparently. There's lots of little rooms. And I'm guessing this is it. This is my best guess. Nice room. Be able to see the whites of their eyes tonight. Yeah, good. Pleasant room. Got their own in house PA system. This looks like it should be adequate, but then what do I know? Yeah. Make our way back down. So take the elevator, but no, I'm going to swap hands on the handrail. I'm just going out there, I'll do it. <laughs> this is the lobby. This is the max. yet got my bearings, I don't know where we are in the city, but that's the, uh, that's the building we're in. The saddest of sights, the remnants of a Benoffi pie. Very nice guy in catering a couple of gigs ago made an extra one we had it for pud at dinner and then he made an extra one that he gave us for the bus and it's been gradually demolished with great joy very short walk and talk today 
We're in Stockholm, it's cold. The river's frozen over. I'm cold, but I'm reasonably well wrapped up. But I'm also at that point in the tour where you wake up and you go, oh, Stockholm, yeah, whatever. Go on over and go back to sleep. However, we've just done three nights in a row on the bus. A string of gigs in a row. Probably 10 days, but only a couple of days off. That's good for the band, it makes it really tight and everything just locks into place. But it's surprisingly tiring, particularly when you've got a sleeper bus and not a proper hotel room. So I'm kind of at that point where you're just conserving your energy for the gig, really. So I'm no big walk today. Lovely gig in uh, Oslo last night in the concert booth, which was a proper uh, concert hall, classical concert hall with a, a massive organ. Stop tittering at the back. And a really nice venue, really good audience. And we have one of those where it just sort of flows through you without you making any effort at all. We've got tonight in Stockholm. Oh dear, oh dear, they look good, don't they? I will pass by, however. We've got tonight in Stockholm. And we're off to we're off home for three or four days then we have a show in Tallinn and then two shows in Finland which is great because I've never been there I don't quite know yet how we're getting from place to place we don't have the bus anymore as much as I love and admire the bus driver who was brilliant I will be glad to see the back of that bus I eventually got the hang of sleeping on it, but I didn't sleep properly and woke up aching because of the constant vibration and jolting. Uh, so, the schedule at the moment for the three gigs in Tallinn and Finland says ground transport. Now that could be anything from a limousine to a horse and cart. And I think I know which end of the scale it's going to be, judging by the way this tour has been conducted and financed so uh, I've got some editing to do I've got to catch up on shows from Budapest Prague Berlin Copenhagen Oslo and this one and for some reason the editing on my iMovie on my MacBook has slowed to a crawl I think because it uses so much memory and drive space for processing as you're going along I've been trying to run it off an external hard disk drive but it's not fast enough and it's taking me stupid amounts of time to edit the movies together so I might just do them at home where I can do it on my desktop Mac in Adobe Premiere Elements other editing programs are available and get them uploaded and done so for those of our viewers who remember the artist Christoph's Verhalter Reichstag and the rat Pont Neuf, <laughs> this is our version of it on the tour bus. Sam has taken to wrapping things in tape. Sam, please explain the, the artist. Give me some art bollocks well, about this. My work a, exists primarily at the, you know, that well, kind of thing. On the tour bus. It's, it's a horrifying clash between our personal lives and our work lives <laughs> and it's, it's a representation of how we lose our freedom on tour oh good Whoa. art bollocks Thank top art Deep. bollocks there Deep. Wow. my work exists primarily at the interstitial zone between sound and silence <laughs> <laughs> so this is daisy eating a wrapped grape off a wrapped fork after which she's going to take a swig of that wrapped bottle of beer and then a swing of that wrapped can of Heineken. And then you have some wrapped cheese balls. Uh, Performance art at its finest, ladies and gentlemen. This is crazy wrapping bread. God, I'm proud to be present at this fine moment. 
monumental. Oh, Jesus. Monumental. It's not doing it very well. <coughs> Occasionally in modern art. I am, I've got technique, man. Quasi, explain, got the, explain the motivation behind what you're doing. Pull the tape out first and then lay it apart. It's the helter skelter bread. technique. What's that? <laughs> Yeah, there we go. Oh, no, he's beginning to develop a methodology. If the bread is suffering. <laughs> methodology is everything. Do I have to eat this afterwards? <laughs> 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 Later for our cuisine of beer, forks and grapes. This is why polar bears have got nowhere to sit down. What? I'll feel keep Well, you're giving it a really skinny waist there, Quizzy. I've got to say, it's you've like made a, a half decent. <laughs> you've made a decent fist of that, Quasi. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> pull, pull, and, pull and lay. Pull the tape out first, and then lay it upon the bread. Is my technique this, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really bird, He's expressing himself. Don't mess yeah, with it. Exactly. Tracy Emmy wasn't even trying with her bed. <laughs> 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 Fucking lazy. Now you've got to do the whole thing, Quasi. Yeah. Go yeah, round, yeah. go round. There we go. Round, round, baby, baby round. 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 You wrap me right round <laughs> like a slice of bread. My mother would kill me. Crazy, that's actually beautiful. And I'm, baby close, I'm close coming. to tears. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wrap. <laughs> Fantastic. It's a little bit boob shown, but no. You're over the lens. Hey, Jay, and to press, well, it is that's recording. Right. Okay, these are my guitars. This is my 1987 Japanese Strat that has been with me for a long, long while. I never had to pay for it, which is a story that I can't tell in public. It's got locking tram system, the Fender System 4, I think it was called. Was it made by Fender or is it like yes, a color? No, I, okay, okay. I think it's Fender and it stays bang in tune. Nice. Um, vintage lace sensor. Love these gold pickups <laughs> yeah. with the TBX control yeah. and the Clapton mid boost. <laughs> nice. And this guitar stays bang in tune. You can leave it for a week. You can so do a week's worth of gigs and it'll still be in tune. It's been your workhorse with all the big artists you've played with? Everybody. This has been my main <coughs> weapon since 1987. Gorgeous. And then this is a PRS SE, that's the kind of cheap PRS that I bought when I started doing a lot of old field things because I needed 24 fret. Yeah. And I'm really pleased with this little yeah, it's guitar. Gorgeous. It's cheap but it plays nicely and it does the trick. You said to me that it's got its own voice. I think it has got its own voice, I, it, yes. Do you know what pickups are inside? No. I'm afraid I'm the worst guitar owner I can ever know about. I just don't, I just play them, I don't really care. Do you know what these are made of? <laughs> just, just no idea at all. <laughs> okay, so you kept it stock, never modded it? No, I haven't touched it. And you use Elixir strings on both your guitars? I use Elixir right? strings on both my guitars. Which uh, gauge do you use? 10 to 46. Nice. Strings for men. Yeah. Good. Yeah, there you go. And I... <coughs> I borrow Max's acoustic for two spots during the show, one of which requires an incredibly quick change. Otherwise, I take care of myself during the show. Mm. Max has so many guitar changes to do. Good. So, we are at the airport hotel in Stockholm. Got a flight home 245 and outside my window I could see this. So of course I had to come and have a wee forest walk. Memo to self, don't fall over and sprain an ankle and miss the flight because nobody knows where you are. So I'm gonna be a bit careful with my footing. Make my way through this lovely forest. Really nice gig in the Philadelphia, felt with two Fs in Stockholm last night, which was a kind of strange multi-rooms convention centre that seemed to be used mostly for daytime worship. There was all sorts of 
services going on. Nice little room to play in. Great catering. It's, uh, meat meatballs with Lincoln berries, which was absolutely delicious. <sighs> right, so as long as I can see the hotel, I kind of figure I'm okay. Famous last words. <laughs> this is where I wanted to be for a month. Deer, it's too big for a rabbit. Although we've got three shows to do. Last night had a somewhat end of tour feel to it. That big heap of snow up there. These countries are great when they get snow. They just quietly get out the plough, clear it away, put steel nipple tyres on the vehicles and continue to drive down the motorway at 70 miles an hour regardless of how much snow there is. And there's no drama at all. Anyway. Lovely soft moss and leaf mould underfoot. I'm really not expecting anyone to watch this. This is entirely for my own enjoyment. And to have a record of it. So it's been a strange tour in many ways for me. The two hours on stage are still always a massive joy but the stuff that goes on around it particularly in view of the budgetary constraints that the promoter chose to put on us have just amplified the tedium and the normal natural condition of a touring musician when you're not on stage is yeah hurry up and wait basically you get up in the morning and you wait for breakfast and then you wait for whatever form of transport is going to take you to the next city and you get the gig and you wait like wait for showtime then you have two hours of concentration and adrenaline. And then you wait until you can get sleep again. So there's like two hours of pleasure, 22 hours of waiting. And I think I've become particularly conscious of my age compared to my colleagues on this particular tour. Because physically it's taken its toll. Nights that we slept on the bus, I've woke up in the morning, even if I've slept, which is not always the case, I've woken up just aching. My limbs aching from having been jolted around all night I guess I don't know but I've definitely noticed it and because we've been on the bus I've not had the opportunity to do my 20 minute chair yoga session in the mornings that I normally do in a hotel after breakfast so that's not been an option So I felt a little stiff and cumbersome. Right, remember memos to self not to get lost. Uh, can't see the hotel anymore, but I can navigate by that big bank of snow up there. And if I go out this way and turn left, 
I'll maybe follow this, it looks a bit like a sort of animal trail through here. And there's a kind of ridge running back in the direction I want to go. But the rocks mean it's going to be hard going. Last resort is I open Google Maps. Worst case scenario is I haven't got a signal out here. But it's okay. It's lovely to be here. Oh yeah, look at that, big wall of snow. Some new growth on the forest floor. Spring is coming. I can't wait to go to Helsinki and uh, we're going to Italian first. More big poo, that's definitely not rabbit. I've never been to Finland, never been to Estonia. So I'm thoroughly looking forward to that. And I think I should get time for a few good walks. There's a slightly worrying aspect to it in that the only information we have about how we're getting from one place to the other are the words ground transport because the bus has gone home they've sent the truck with the PA and all the gear in it home so we're hiring gear out there and I think we're taking a few ferries to get from one place to another and uh, anyone that's bought guitars We'll have to carry them. I'm hiring them. Or they are hiring it for me. You take potluck with what you get. I had a Strat in Dubai that was a complete dog. Look at that. Beautiful, delicate little fungus. Look at that. It's beautiful. Um, yeah, I had a Strat that was a total dog. So God knows what's going to happen here. They claim they've got a Kemper, but I bought the little Kemper player, the little mini Kemper, back in December. And it arrived just in time for me to build all my sounds on it for this tour. And I bought it as a backup. And I'm going to take it to the last three shows as a backup just in case they haven't managed to hire the right thing and they hand me something like a, a helix and say well it does the same thing which it kind of does but I can't transfer my sounds into it and it would mean staying up all night programming it but I've got my little baby camper so I should be okay Right, that's the hotel. Here we are, we managed not to get lost. Right, I'm going to turn the camera off and get at least another 10-15 minutes in the forest. One other comment to make on the forest. In England this would have been fenced off and marked as private property. Why do we do that? 
I'm also starting to confuse reality with computer games and I'm feeling like I'm in a scene in Red Dead Redemption where I look at that little wooden tower and think okay I better go and see if there's anything there worth having and I better climb up it and have a look around so if I can make my way down this boulder strewn slope maybe that's the best route but I'll just duck underneath that tree no, let's try this route. I must get a head thing for the GoPro. I've got both hands free when I'm doing this. Look at all the bracken that's here in the summer. Some kind of bird watching hide. It's solid enough. So up we go. Carefully, but up nonetheless. Master of all we survey. The size of that animal dung suggests that there are creatures around here that are worth hunting. When you look at this, it's a miracle that trees can even grow here. Look how much this tree has had to negotiate its way around the rock underground. And the roots have made their way through these big chunks of rock to find the soil and the nourishment underneath. The cynics amongst you will of course point out that this tree is actually dead and has fallen over but it's big enough to have been a reasonably mature tree in its life when it was living. It's not without effort. <laughs> 